Hello and welcome back. To give you a recap of what we did in the last video, we finished out our panel functionality and started our menu manager. And in this video, we're going to be finishing up the functionality within our menu manager. We don't have a whole lot to do, so let's go ahead and let's get started. And within the menu manager, we're going to be writing some functions for going to the previous panel as well as setting up a new panel, as well as managing when we're going to be adding it to the history. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is creating a function called go to previous which is going to go to the previous panel in our history. We'll be then writing another function that we're going to be saying set current with history. And I'll explain a little bit more once we get all this written out. And we'll just write set current with history. And then this will have an argument of, of type panel. And we'll just call that argument a new panel. And then we'll be creating another one that will call just set current and it'll be private. And this one will also accept a panel argument. And then for simplicity's sake, if we go up here, we'll add an update function or we'll put it under our setup panels actually. Write private void update. And this is where we're gonna have our input statement for going to our previous panel. Now, if you're working on a much larger project, you may want to put this in its own input manager or something like that, but for simplicity, I'm just putting it right here. So I'm going to just write if my OVR input get down and I'm just going to write OVR input dot button and I'm just going to use the primary hand trigger and that'll essentially just be that grip button. And I'm doing this because I'm testing this on both my Vive as well as my Oculus Quest. So I'm just using a button that's a little bit easier on both of those. And when we do that, we're just going to want to go to previous. Now, if we scroll down here, don't think the first thing that we're going to be tackling is the go to previous. I think we're going to just tackle the set current first because it is quite an important function. It's not terribly complex, but what our set current function is going to do is it's going to hide our current panel and activate the one that we're passing in. And if you remember, we have that current panel variable up at the top. And we're just going to call that hide function on it. And then we want to set up our current panel with the one that we're passing in. So we're replacing that current panel. And then we want to show that one. And what this is effectively doing is toggling these two panels. So you don't have to have all of this functionality. So if you have five different panels to say, when you activate this one, deactivate these four. Because the only panels that we're really concerned with is the one that's currently turned on. And there's only ever going to be one turned on in this particular instance. If you have a more complicated or complex user interface, then there will be exceptions to this. But that's actually it for our set current. And then we're going to have our set current with history. Because anytime we're going to be opening a new panel, we don't want to always add it to the history. And we'll write this out and I'll explain a little bit more about that this function is going to be called by a button. So as an example, when we hit our options button, it's going to be calling this set current with history and passing in the options panel. So we'll access our panel history. We'll write add and we we'll want to add the current panel that we're in. So if we're at the main panel, we'll add that to our history and we'll be going to the options panel. But what we're going to do is we're going to call that set current function and pass in our new panel. And to elaborate more on why we need to be able to set a panel without adding it to the history is imagine that we're in our root menu and we can see our sort of our play button, our options button. And when we click our options button and go to the options panel, we then want to be able to hit our back button and go back to our root menu. But when we're in that root menu, we don't want to be able to press the back button and then go back to the options menu. When we're at our hub or our root menu, when we hit the back button, we don't want it to do anything. But one thing we would need to do if you're using OVR is we would need to show a special dialog to say, hey, do you want to exit the app? So that's why it's very important to be able to go from one panel to another without adding that panel to the history. But we'll handle all of that in this go to previous function, where the first thing that we need to do is check to see if we actually have any panels in the history. So we'll say if our panel history count is equal to zero, then we want to return. So we don't want to do anything if we don't have any panels to work with. If there is a piece of functionality that you would want to execute when there is no panel history, you would put it within this if statement. 
So let's see if we can actually do that really quick. I don't know if I remember that dialogue off the top of my head, but we'll copy and put that in there. And I believe it's OBR manager dot platform UI confirm quit. And that's what we would need to show. So if the user is within the root menu and they press the back button, this is a special modal that'll show up that says, hey, do you want to exit the app? And that's a requirement if you want to get onto the Oculus Store. But if you're using SteamVR, you don't got to worry about this. But we'll actually just leave that in for right now. The next thing we want to do is access the last element of our history, since that's going to be the most recent element that we need to go to. So we'll say last index. And it's just going to be our panel history dot count minus one. And that's going to get the last index. And then we want to get that panel and we want to set it as the current one. And this is where that set current without using the history comes into play. Not only is it being used within the set current with history, but it's going to be used here as well. So we'll write set current. We'll access that panel history list. We'll use our braces here and we'll just write last index. And there you go. So we're saying, hey, get the last thing in our history and let's show that instead. But when we show it, we also need to remove it from the list. And I'm just going to do that here. There may be a little bit cleaner way of doing that, but that's fine. And we'll just write panel history, remove at, and we'll remove at that index, last index. And there we go. That's actually it for the menu manager. What we need to do now is go into Unity and just set up the use for our set current with history buttons. So let's do that really quick. And now we're in Unity, let's go to our canvas. Let's double click our panel main. We'll rotate around here so we can just get a better look at it. And let's just disable our panel options really quick so we can get a, get a better view of what this is gonna do. And we'll just set up our top button here for our options. And we'll just rename it really quick too, just so we know. So we'll write options, and then we'll click on the button. We'll scroll down here, we'll add on to our on-click event, and I believe we'll just need to drag in our canvas here. And we should have that menu manager script on there, and we'll have access to this set current with history. So we'll click that, and then we just need to give it whatever panel we want to open. And it's gonna be this options panel here, and we'll drag that in there. And that's pretty much it. Let's open up our reactivate our options panel. We'll disable our main panel right now. So we can just set up this back button here. We'll rename it as well so it's a little bit easier. So we'll just say back and then we'll click on the button. We'll scroll down here, pretty much do the same thing. But instead of using that set current, we're gonna say go to previous because naturally we want to go back to our root menu or our main panel. Because if we use the set with history, when we went back to it, we would be adding this panel to our history. Meaning that if we hit the back button while we're at our main panel, it'll go back to this, which is what we want. All right, so let's we'll re-enable this. So let's hit play. And we'll hit our options button. And we'll see that it takes us to our options panel. We can then hit our back button to go back to our main panel. And then if we click on the options button again, we can use our grip button to go back to our main panel. And this is a really simple example, but you can use this system to build much larger UIs with multiple panels. And it's a decent enough solution for most simple VR menus. If you have any questions or problems, or maybe you have a suggestion for an addition, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next one.